And we are live on this Sunday evening. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to give a few minutes for everybody to get on. I hope you truly enjoyed this wonderful, beautiful Michigan weekend. Um, talked to you last night. Been a lot more going on today. I actually spent more hours in my office than I did doing the things I needed to do in my uh, yard. I probably will have wished that I did those things, but I didn't. So um, I mentioned to you last night, this is part two. Uh, I wanted both of these to be shorter, and I hope this one will be as well. But this is one of the most important ones we've had since we kicked off, and we're looking for uh, volunteers and uh, circulators in the beginning of the Unlock campaign. Uh, the reason that I say this is um, this is truly um, a, a time when we have to, again, claim our victories, and then let's put our victories into perspective and understand what we have to do to get over that finish line right now. So what you'll see on the bottom is the call to action is the link is going to be off of our website. Uh, we're not going to put those onto the Facebook page. So we're just going to simply have you go to standupmichigan.com. When you go there, if it's on a computer, you will see Operation Victory in the top line. If you are in a mobile phone, you can click on the menu and you'll see Operation Victory. Either way, click on that. It will take you to uh, the Operation Victory section or page. Basically, that explains a little bit of where we are at, and you will see both at the top and at the bottom a sign-up link. You can click on the sign-up, and while we're on this call, as we get going, I'm going to ask you all, if you have another device, to go ahead and get signed up if you're going to be willing to help us this last three weeks to get over the line, and I'll explain what in just a minute. Uh, there are three scenarios that you're going to see when you go there, but I want to go over those with you here. We got the signatures. We've turned them into the Secretary of State. The law has been declared unconstitutional by this court. There are three things that are going to happen on November 3rd. Number one, the House needs to be retained. The reason is, if indeed the House remains in the hands of people who will vote to repeal and abolish this law for good, we do not have to worry about the delay in getting this approved by the Secretary of State. Scenario two is, if the House goes the other direction, the Secretary of State may find whatever reason, it could be the election, whatever, to drag this out until January when the Democrats take over the House, if that was to happen, it's not going to, and then they would say, we're not going to take up this legislation because we're not going to vote for it even though it's unconstitutional. We're going to leave it there. And then we go to an election two years from now. I don't think that's going to happen. We're not going to let that happen, but understand it is a possibility. Now, what we know right now is what would be the reason that anyone on the legislature, again, would not vote to repeal or abolish a law that has been deemed unconstitutional in its entirety? Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, that leads us to number two. There are two openings on the Supreme Court. One of the people that wrote our opinion was Justice Markman. He is uh, aged out, retiring at the end of December. There are two seats open. The other one is by Bridget McCormick, who is actually rerunning for election. And she probably is going to prevail because she is the only current justice running as an incumbent. And nine times out of 10 or more than that, they're going to be reelected, which means we have two votes, but we probably only have one slot. She voted with a dissenting opinion. She voted to retain and keep the 1945 law for the governor to act unilaterally as long as she saw fit and not have any checks and balances. We believe it's against the Constitution, which the other four justices thankfully agreed. The reason I'm mentioning this is it's very important that we vote for candidates that can be and are electable. This is the reason that we're going to be leading you towards two specific candidates. It isn't because there aren't other people that are qualified. If you are part of Stand Up Michigan to Unlock Michigan's group, you will see a post that was just scheduled to go up at 7 o'clock that is going to explain the specifics of why we're doing what we're doing. We have information. Obviously, there's polling and there are things that go on. But let me just share one piece of fact with you, which is part of this information, but I want you to have it. Two years ago, a libertarian candidate who is running again this time ran for the Supreme Court. This person is a good, we're not saying he's not a qualified individual, but here are the numbers. He received 360,000 votes in 2018. To 
get a seat, you had to get 1,600,000 votes. And here is what happened. We ended up getting a person who was victorious, which was Megan Kavanaugh. She got the second seat last time with 1,584,000 votes. And a conservative by the name of Curtis Wilder lost out on that seat by a total of 65,000 votes. They got 1,519,000 votes. So it was 25.3% to 24.26%. That's because 6% and 3% went to other candidates and they basically knocked each other out. It's the same exact situation that we're facing right now. And all of you have your own vote. You can choose totally independently. To, we're not telling you who to vote for. All we're saying is if you want to control the rule of law, if you want to have another conservative in there, we only have three weeks until the election. You will see after the fact where the numbers came in. I can't say where they're going to be. But what I can say is we believe that there are two candidates who have an opportunity to be that person and to win that second seat. Also understand that McCormick, who is running, is buddying up to another liberal named Welch that she has tied herself to, signs together, advertising together. They are absolutely fighting together to be elected together, and that will flip the court 4-3. Absolutely no doubt in anybody's mind. It is vital that we elect at least one good Supreme Court candidate who will defend this rule of law. One of them, which is Brock Schwartzel, understand, actually ruled on the Carl the Barber case in the Court of Appeals and wrote the opinion, which was a descending opinion, before it went to the Supreme Court. And that ended up being upheld, by the way, seven to nothing. He is a very scholarly type individual. And the other one is Mary Kelly. And she is polling very, very well right now. Name recognition is going to determine where people vote on down ballot and how it'll be. So we need help on those two areas. The third area we need help in on all of these issues is we need turnout. So we need help in counties some counties with House members need people to help knock on doors. Some areas need help with poll watchers or verification areas in certain areas or districts or precincts. So what I'm going to mention to you again now is you'll notice on this banner that's scrolling at the top, we want you to go to StandUpMichigan.com, click on the link of Operation Victory at the top. And if you sign up, when you click on there, you'll see you're going to put in like you did when you circulated, your email and your name and information, and then it has some questions of how you'd be willing to help. Is it to help put signs in your yard and help in your county in some way? Is it to help knock on doors in your own district or a neighboring district if we need help there? Is it to help with poll watching in your district? Or are you someone who has done this maybe before and says, I would be willing to travel to a location where we need other people to verify these mail-in ballots and other things to make sure that we have a fair election and that everyone is able to have votes both counted but only once. We're basically saying that there's a lot out there that, that we have at stake. And so what we're going to do once you sign up is we're going to look at the area in which you are, are willing to help. We're then going to connect you directly to the information about that area. It could be about the Supreme Court uh, justices and getting signs to be distributed in your county and area so we could have potentially distribution or help with distribution of thousands of signs throughout Michigan in a quick period of time for name recognition. The other issue is the House. We've talked about this a couple times, and I just want to go over it a little more in detail. We believe that there are a number of seats that need to be retained, meaning they're closer races and districts. These individuals have all pledged to vote to repeal the 45 law. They have also voted to uphold all of our individual rights and liberties and believe that what the governor's done is wrong. It's about message. It's not about party. It's about what they stand for. And if you heard me talk yesterday, you'll understand from what I talked about at the Capitol, Stand Up Michigan is about our values. Again, right? Citizen rights, sacred values, constitutional freedoms. These people stand for those things and they've pledged that. They may have, and probably in most cases here, have actually helped with the Unlock campaign in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we have a couple seats that need to be retained. We have five open seats. This means that they were, these were all seats that were held by people who voted and would vote this year, if we get this done by the end of the year, to be able to 
uh, make sure that that uh, that they would vote to repeal this law. They are all going to be termed out, meaning they've served they've served three terms or six years in the House, and they are going to be up. Meaning we have five open seats, and those are being held by people who are on record as 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 supporting us, and people who either won't say or have said specifically they will not support us. And so we need to make sure those people get elected and we will be identifying those districts. You may live in one of those districts. So that's why you'll identify from here, standupmichigan.com, click on Operation Victory or just scroll down a ways you'll see it. Click on sign up and you can read through the difference of the scenarios. You can also then click to sign up and ask and offer how it is you can help. We would then ask you if you would, please just take the Stand Up Michigan email link and send this to your friends and relatives and like-minded people that you have around you in your church, in your workplace, with associations, groups, whatever, just like you did when people signed. And send that to them and say, can you sign up and help too? And now I'm going to explain to you why. So we also have three seats where there are people rerunning that specifically are vulnerable seats. And we believe we could flip those to people who are on record saying they again would vote to repeal or abolish the 1945 law. So we have a Supreme Court we have to maintain. It's going to be good for us. And remember, I mentioned it again, but I'm going to talk about it one more time. Elections have consequences, right? The consequences were we elected this governor. We all now want to do all kinds of things. We, we, you know, we, we want to you know, change things. We don't agree with her opinions. We don't agree with her policy. She is our governor. We in Michigan elected her. If she isn't what we thought, it it doesn't matter. She is our governor right now. We elected the attorney general. She doesn't agree with us. She has literally attacked us in areas and ways that we don't even believe may necessarily are legal, are legal. But she is the attorney general. And we elected a secretary of state, a secretary of state who literally had people who worked in her campaign, lawyers who worked for her, who set up to try and sabotage what it is. And now we depend on her to verify signatures. Look, the three of them together are trouble, but they were elected by us. Let's not make it worse by saying, look, we've done this and now they've switched to the health department and therefore we just are are gonna throw our arms up. And get what? Get the house switching, get another Supreme Court that even makes things worse. Uh, There are a lot worse things than spending this last 21 or 23 days, we're gonna say, uh, three weeks or or uh, uh, three weeks, 21 days from Tuesday to victory. We need your help in these three areas. We're not going to ask for anywhere near the amount of time that you had to spend helping get the signatures in place. But we are acti- asking for you to defend what it is that we accomplished so that we can get that over the finish line. We can retain and maintain the rule of law by the Supreme Court and that we will have the legislature in place from the House and the Senate that will continue both fiscally and other ways to defend our citizen rights going forward. That is a fact and we can we can settle all of that two weeks from, or three weeks from Tuesday, November 3rd. So we need your help again. So that's the first stage. So we talked about the Supreme Court. Uh, now we're gonna talk about, and we have talked a little bit about the uh, re- retaining the uh, House of Representatives. Um, the final thing that we're going to do, and I'm scrolling it on the screen now, is going to be um, is going to be specifically for us to help with election day operations. I know I mentioned it, but we are looking for uh, approximately 3,000 volunteers across the state of Michigan who would be willing to work as volunteers on election day in precincts. They may be on your county, they may be in a neighboring county, or you may be able to travel. In order for you to do that, you can go through a long process and maybe you already have in your own county. That's wonderful. Those of you that are interested, there is a real slant. If you are approved and go through the training, which is a very short video online training, you get credentialed. Here's how it works, believe it or not. If you are credentialed under the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, either one, you are automatically able to go on a list and be able to be Uh, assigned to a polling location to help with both absentee ballots, 
to help with mail-in ballots, to help with counting those, maybe even the day before an election, and to challenging ballots and give you the resources that you would have to be able to make phone calls to a bank of lawyers that would say, something doesn't right going on here and whatever it is, we need 3,000 people to volunteer to handle that process to make sure, again, that we have a fair election all the way around. We also need volunteers because, let's face it, we are going to have a much larger version of ballots that are going to come in uh, from mail-in or from absentee than we have seen in maybe ever in history, but certainly in any election that we can recall in a, a long period of time. So we need help there anyway. So by going to standupmichigan.com, I want you to do it right away. By the time we go through tomorrow morning, I want to be able to report to you the numbers that we have and 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 be able to continue to encourage you. So that's why I say, rather than, yes, off of the page, share this video so they can understand why and where we need help. If those people that you worked with signed the unlock petition and want to see the checks and balances return, and they want to see this law to be abolished and end Whitmer's endless shutdown, we understand where we're at with the, the health department. That will be handled in its own right, but we cannot let another governor ever again utilize this law or another court rule differently. So we have to work together. I'm calling you one more time. And, and I've had a lot of you that have reached out and said, I am thankful you have a new call to action. I feel like I'm at least accomplishing something. I hope that thousands of you feel the same way. And I hope we're overwhelmed. If we can get 4,000 of you basically to go in and fill out an information and an email to Secretary of State to verify signatures, and we can get 13,000 of you to send a signed email or letter uh, in regards to the uh, unmasking the athletes, student athletes, uh, then I believe we can get 3,000 of you that will volunteer to help either distribute signs, help knock on doors in those close districts. And to let you know, those districts, we're only talking about nine or 10 districts that are in that, that, that area. So we're not talking about 20, 30, 50. It's like nine or 10, but we want to have huge volume. All elections, as you know, when it comes to that level, are local. They're going to be about who gets the biggest message out, who knocks on the most doors, who provides the right solutions. And we believe that having the extra resources, human resources, that can help from everything from the signs to the knocking on doors to potential call campaigns to being able to help at the precinct or the polls is invaluable to being able to deliver local elections, state elections, national elections for people that will preserve the individual rights and the reason that you all joined this movement. Stand Up Michigan is special in that every time we have had a call, you have answered. I am hoping and praying and believing that you will answer again. I targeted 20,000. We got 60,000. We targeted, you know, we have no idea how many of you will be willing to do this. What if more of us had just done a little bit more? Would we have preserved all that work we did? I'm not doing it as a scare tactic. I'm doing it by having you look at reality. Our governor, our attorney general, our secretary of state were all elected two years ago. They were all elected to serve there and they have all done to us what they've done to us. And if they weren't there, none of this would have happened. We have to change the trajectory. It starts with you local. It starts with us in an area wide, meaning district wide for houses. It starts with us statewide with the, with the, with the, uh, uh, the Supreme Court. And it also needs to be done na nationwide because if indeed things change and we become uh, factories closing and, and losing more jobs and locked down longer as those are promising to do, we're gonna lock you down for the next four months. We're going to we're going to continue this until we have a vaccine and then they're going to what try and force you to, you know, the, the issue is we need your help. We're providing that right here. We need you to do three things. Go there. Standupmichigan.com. Simple. Sign up, read about it, and you'll click on the areas in which you're willing to help. We're then going to separate those. So we're not going to send you information or links on the areas that you're not willing or able to help. We're going to focus on the areas that you're willing. If you are willing in several areas, this will be so easy for you because we're not doing this work. Other people are providing us the links of where we can connect you with 
the people and the teams that will help the knock on doors. We're going to make sure that you're you're able to get and help distribute signs uh, and or help with election day activities. Um, we're going to stay in touch with you throughout this whole next three weeks, obviously. We have sent the letter, as we mentioned, to the Secretary of State. We are demanding or asking strongly to basically have us be able to get uh, the, the a commitment from her that in the 60 days that she will verify these or work towards that so that we can vote and let this legislature handle this. But there is no guarantee that that's the way it's going to go. I can almost assure you right now that if indeed we do what we say we're going to do, and if we hold the House, there will be zero reason for them not to get this off the books because it's not going away. Uh, and it's going to be approved. And the signatures with 200,000 extra is going to happen. So we've only been 21 minutes. Those are the things I wanted again to stay on here because with our calls to action, so often we say, can you leave for just a few minutes? Can you go there and begin the sign up process? I don't want you to think that you're going to do it tomorrow and then somehow forget to do it. I need you to be able to go there, click on there, and sign up. It will take you probably two to three minutes. And then in the next few days, over this next three, four days, we will then reach out to you by district or area, by county, and, and put you in touch with the links necessary to be able to help. A lot of groups, a lot of individuals realize that we uh, have and are something special. All we can do is utilize and, and share your collective voices with each other. And we're going to utilize the Stand Up Michigan, Unlock Michigan group, just as we have, to share the stories of how you're helping here. The same way as you shared your stories for getting the petition uh, signatures and turning those in. We're going to let you go and share the stories of how you're helping, the differences you made when you knocked on doors, uh, pictures of the signs that are out and so on. Because in this three week period of time, we can change the trajectory. If indeed it's going a different direction, we have the ability to instill change. We've done it all along for the last eight months. The legislature, as I mentioned yesterday, did not approve an extension because of you. It was you that did it. Unlock could have not done this without us. And look what we accomplished. In the same way, we have to finish the job. We're depending and counting on you to do it. We have every faith that it's going to happen because we're not done now and we're not going to be done after the election. It's just going to be what's next. We've got to get these laws done. We've got to recover together, which takes us back to us individually being the solution in our own community and not depending on the government. 23 minutes in, I want to be finished in less than 30. So I'd just like to have a few more of your comments I'm going to read through here and see what some of you might be saying. Um, I just want you to know that we will be, once you connect on those house issue races, letting you know where those districts are and, and connecting you directly. Like I said, it's not like it's a random amount of districts, but all of your district people, if you want to just work in your county, uh, need help. And indeed, if we could get 25 or 50 extra door knockers in those uh, districts, it will change both the amount of people that will vote what they're going to vote for and um, and making sure that, again, you're defending uh, all of the all of the uh, uh, of the rule of law and, of course, defending what what it is that we've accomplished at this point, And that is to get rid of and repeal and or I'm going to say abolish the 1945 law, which is unconstitutional. So together, we're going to finish this strong again. Uh, we have always mentioned to you that we don't want to trip and fall over that finish line. We want to blow through it. And real victory will be in November when we get this law abolished. We can celebrate that together when we retain the House to make sure, again, that we have the checks and balances in place for 2021. And then we are going to continue to work on these areas with the health department and releasing it. But a lot of you have been commenting that you're seeing things different still. You're seeing things different at at grocery stores and at places, and, and, and there's some changes. I've been to a couple of restaurants that they have more tables in place. Uh, there is a change happening. More are standing up. Be confident that we are making strides together. And uh, again, uh, all I can do is put the call out to you and, and ask you to do this for us one more time. There are a lot of people depending on us in the local area, on the state level, and even on the national level, we're being looked at to what we can do in finishing the job. So I'm going to finish this at 25 minutes, but I would ask two things again. Share this video off of the page to your friends, your relatives, people that sign the Unlock Michigan petition. 
Let them sign up and encourage them. Share with this video the link to StandUpMichigan.com. Have them go there, Operation Victory, and have them sign up to help too. If you could get a team within your area or district, each of you, we could actually blow through these numbers and make a dramatic change that nobody could ever see coming. I absolutely believe and know that it can happen. I don't care what polls say. I believe that we can change them up until the time that we vote. And together as a team, we do more things as we build energy together. So I thank you for your time. I wanted to see again, is there any other individual comments we've got? Um, seeing just lots of comments uh, that are here and I'm hoping that with what I'm seeing here, that uh, that more and more people of you are going to uh, get out and uh, and and uh, and and make your voices known, fill out and sign up to help, share the information so that we can get more people. And we look forward to talking with you. We will be updating you in the next 24 to 48 hours um, with more lives and updated information. We'll give you an updated count, but we're looking for 3,000 of you overall to help. And we appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you for your time and have a great evening. Enjoy what's left of this beautiful Sunday, Michigan evening. Have a great day. We'll talk very soon.